morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but everyone is welcome to listen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for another day in which we can learn of him and walk in his ways. And as I've said many times, and I'm going to continue to say it, there is but one way to know how to please God and that is to abide in his word, to read it, and to do what it says. And this is written throughout the scripture. I have a very important message today, and I do ask that people listen to the entire message today before commenting. I want to talk about spiritual warfare and how the enemy operates. You know, Satan is a spirit. He is not he is not able to do anything without influencing people. When we read in the scripture that the enemy, Satan, goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, this happens when the enemy does this. He does it in the minds and the hearts and the mouths and the actions of people. People. So Satan is very powerful, evil spirit, and it's not always easy to recognize when we are being influenced. And, you know, one thing I would say to you, my sisters, is that to be a Christian means that first, we love the Lord our God. And second, we love our neighbor as ourselves. And Jesus Christ said, right before he went to be crucified, that his people, his disciples, would be known by their love for one another. And so, therefore, in this time, when we are involved in spiritual warfare, and let me add here that the battle is fierce right now, that the enemy wants to destroy that, the love of the brethren, the unity of of the spirit that exists in the body of Christ. And the enemy, the serpent, the snake, wants to make God's people look just like the rest of the world. And the way he does this is to whisper things into your mind, or he'll send one of his devils to whisper something into your mind. Every time that we have a wicked thought, it's not coming from Satan directly necessarily, but all the evil spirits the fallen angels serve Satan, and they act as agents of his agenda. So this is a very serious thing, and I'm going to speak some things that we want to understand as being spiritual warfare, and we all can be impacted by these things. And I want to say first, I know I said first, but before I get into this, I want to say that I am also under attack by these kinds of things. And we all need to recognize it when it's happening and know what to do about it. Some time ago, I knew that the enemy was sowing seeds of discord amongst the brethren and causing people to have resentments and bitterness in their heart. One of the things that I learned as a Christian early on was that unforgiveness and bitterness are something that defile us. And that when we feel hurt, it's very easy to have a door open in our heart to allow a, a root of bitterness and unforgiveness to spring up in our heart. Narcissism is the condition of our time in most people. Most of us have been impacted by narcissism. Pardon me, narcissism. And that doesn't mean that we're only someone who's been hurt by a narcissist. It means that we have characteristics of selfishness, self-righteousness, pride, envy, and so forth 
operating in our heart, and it's very hard to see it. It's easy to see it in someone else and very difficult to see it in oneself. I recently did a video where I talked about self-examination and the importance of it, and I urge you to watch it if you haven't watched it already. I will link it in the description box below. The truth of the matter is, is that in order to not become susceptible to the wiles of the devil, we have to examine ourselves and we have to notice it and take heed to it and attend to it immediately when we see bitterness coming up in our heart. And I'm going to speak about how to do this as we proceed. But first I want to talk about some things that, that I have experienced personally in my walk with Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to name any names here, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but it's necessary for me to, to open up some things for everyone to think about and pray about. Some time ago, I became aware that the enemy was sowing seeds of resentment and bitterness in people's hearts. And they were pulling back and starting to think evil of people uh, in the body of Christ. It wasn't just me, it was others as well. But in the way that I knew it was impacting me, part of what I saw was that I did couldn't see it because it was not it was not presented to me. So there were various things that where people had thought I said something I didn't say or they had been, felt um, resentment about something I said, or, or they felt that I was wrong about something I said, but they didn't come to me. What they did, and this, this is error, and I'm not saying this to accuse anybody, I'm saying this for the sake of the body, because when this happens, whether it's to me or anyone else, it causes chasms to form and division in the, the brethren. And that's what the spiritual warfare is. So the enemy will whisper something in your mind, like, like, like um, for example, he or she thinks they know everything. Or, well, you know, they're not right about that. I know about this or that thing, or that, that, that hurts me. It hurts my heart. I can't accept that. And so what happens is instead of coming to the person who offended you, what happens is that people hold it in their heart or they go to someone else. And when this happens, it spreads. And it spreads in a couple of ways. So I want to, to open this up because, you know, none of this can exist in the light. And the point of talking about this is to bring it out into the light so that the enemy can be defeated. This is how we, we conduct this particular spiritual war warfare. So one way that a root of bitterness springing up in our heart can affect other people is when that root brings forth fruit coming forth from our mouth. And we speak to someone else, maybe someone that we sense also has some bitterness or resentment in them. And we complain to them about someone else. And then what happens is we formed an alliance with someone else where we feel kind of justified and and what we're doing and we might be right so I, I do want to to say something here about this I'm not perfect I can make mistakes or I can say something in a way where it causes harm even if it's true we all can make mistakes and verily I would say unto you if you're looking to find someone's mistakes guess what you're going to find them because we all make them but to harbor a resentment or bitter, bitterness in your heart, first and foremost, defiles you. And when we have resentments against someone one else, what happens is our heart is no longer full of light. Our, the light in us becomes darkness. And Jesus warned about this. He said, if the light in thee become darkness, how great is that darkness? So when we have bitterness in our heart or resentment in our heart or we feel that someone has wronged us and we don't tell them about it, we hold it in our heart, we might tell someone else, it causes it to spread. 
And then that other person might speak it to someone else. And then what happens is that the accused, who, who might, there might be a valid accusation, but the accused only senses that there's something wrong in the spiritual realm. They sense that there's, there's distances being created. They sense sometimes that, that there are things being said or spoken that indicate that this is going on. And this is what happened to me. And then I'm getting to now the second way this root of bitterness can spread. So someone who, who has not been told that there's a problem, but senses and begins to detect more and more that what's happening. So they're seeing the chasm and ultimately somehow, some way it will be presented to them and they'll see it. They'll see it. They'll see that there's chatter, that there's gossip, that there's coalitions, that there's complaining and bitterness. And when someone is serving the Lord to the best of their ability, they can feel hurt by that and they can then also feel bitter, particularly because no one brought it to them. This is a very dangerous thing, and we as Christians need to understand that it is something that will ruin our walk with Jesus Christ. Again, if the light in thee become darkness, how great, how great is that darkness? We know that our God is a holy God, and in him is no darkness at all. We also know that Jesus Christ commanded his disciples to love one another and that the world would know us by our love for one another. If you see someone sin, if you see someone making a mistake or doing something stupid or having an attitude that bothers you, it's not loving to suffer that sin upon your brother or sister. It's not loving them because if you're seeing them fall and you kind of feel kind of self-righteous and angry about that and you're bitter and you speak it to someone else, you don't love your brother. You don't love your sister. When that occurs, you're allowing the enemy to whisper in your mind something like, who do they think they are? And what I would say about this, particularly in this time, is that Satan's technology makes this easier. So when you're seeing someone on the screen, it's very easy to find fault and to take a screenshot and send it with to people. And I'm not saying that's occurred with me. It, it, you know, maybe it did a long time ago when I was aware of it. I don't care. I don't care. What I care about is that if a brother or a sister sees me making a mistake, and they're happy to let me do that. And they would rather tell someone else that that is to hate, that it's hate. Because when we see, when we suffer sin upon our brother or sister and we don't tell them, that causes them to continue in it. And then we can point it out. We can say, see, they do this or that. See, see, and it becomes a thing and it's wickedness, it's wickedness. In Galatians 5, 15, praise the Lord. Let's go to the word of God. My sisters, I love you very much. And I tell you this because I love you. I tell you this because I love you. Because when people are in this, and I, I was in it because I felt it. I knew it was happening and it grew and it got to be more and more. And it caused me to do something. So I want to talk about what happened then. I saw the bitterness in my heart and I went to the Lord fasting and prayer and I said, Father, I don't want this bitterness. Make it manifest. Make what is happening manifest so that the light can come in and heal. Make these things manifest and God in his mercy has made things manifest. He has made them manifest. Praise be to God. Galatians chapter 5. Let's start in verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty 
for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. There are brothers and sisters on YouTube who, who serve the body of Christ. And that doesn't mean they're better than anybody. It means that they're serving in a certain way. But every single member of the body of Christ needs the other members. We all do. We all do. And so if someone's serving publicly and they say something stupid or incorrect, or they say it in a way that insults you, or harms you in some way, that it's your obligation to serve that brother or sister by letting them know so they can grow. And withholding that is not love. It's the opposite. Let's go now to verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So if it were you, and that's really you know, the, the golden rule, is it not? To put yourself in someone else's shoes and wonder what it might feel like. Verse 15, but if you love, if you, pardon me, if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh needs to be crucified daily, every single day. We need to examine ourselves to see whether we're walking in the ways of the Lord and abiding in the light, or if we're allowing the darkness to come into our heart and we're walking in the darkness. The works of the flesh are things like adultery and fornication, of course, but there are also things like being desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another, speaking evil, being full of malice and hatred and bitterness, and it can take hold in anyone, and it spreads. So if you don't attend to it in your own flesh, and then you allow yourself to speak and to do, and to start to let the darkness decide what you're going to do instead of abiding in the scripture, what will happen is you will cause that bitterness, that root of bitterness to spread. And I would say it's a poison root. It's a poison root. It needs to be rooted out. These days, people have screens and they have keyboards and it's very easy to, to say something forgetting the person that exists on the other side. And I, I can tell you that I too deal with technology and I am aware of how easy it is to be very harsh. And there have been times when I've been too harsh. I'm not speaking about this like I'm all holier than thou. What I am saying is that we all live in flesh. We all make mistakes and the body of Christ will be recognized by the way we love one another. And when we see someone else faltering or making a mistake or speaking something that causes harm, it's our obligation as a servant of Jesus Christ to bring that to the person so that they can either adjust what they're saying, correct what they're saying, or, or speak to you about why it was said. Maybe they're misunderstanding. But to not do that is to cause a rift. First you step away and then it builds and then you speak it and it spreads. And then ultimately it will get back to the person that you're speaking about and it will cause them also to feel harm and to fall into bitterness. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Second Corinthians chapter seven and verse one. Well, actually I want to begin in chapter six and begin with verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. 
and I will receive you. The world is full of bitterness and envy and strife and debate. As a matter of fact, I would say that is the character of the false church, the religious institutions of our time. Envy, bitterness, debate, strife, pride, wrath. Those characteristics are the characteristics of the whore of Babylon. It's narcissism. So the Lord says, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So to touch not the whore of Babylon means, of course, we don't sit in the pews and, and partake of the idolatry and, and hypocrisy of the false churches. Yes, but we also don't allow ourselves to conduct ourselves that way. We walk in holiness, we walk in the light, and the way the bride of Christ is easily recognized is our love for one another. And sometimes loving someone means saying something that isn't comfortable. It means making yourself vulnerable and admitting maybe that you're wrong. It means saying, you know, that I did this or I did that and allowing the other person to forgive you so that it can be healed. But if we don't forgive our brother, our Heavenly Father will not forgive us. This is written in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14, 15. If we don't forgive one another, we won't be forgiven. This is a very serious thing. It's not about, you know, that I'm insulted because people said things behind my back. It's that the body of Christ is being poisoned and we all need to bring it out into the light and stop it. We need to stop it. We need to recognize that when the enemy gets in our head or our heart and starts whispering to us and we start to build up bitterness, that has to be where it stops. Maybe we need to approach the person. I would say, if you feel someone has harmed you, that's what you need to do. So let's read verse 18 of Second Corinthians chapter 6. And we'll be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Chapter 7. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Filthiness of the spirit. What is filthiness of the spirit? Filthiness of the flesh is pretty easy to see. Things like fornication, adultery, homosexuality, greed, um, wanting the things of this world. But filthiness of the spirit is more like things like envy, wrath, strife, debate, pride, bitterness, self-righteousness. And those things are the filthiness of spirit that we have all take partaken of in times past before we were washed by the blood of Jesus Christ by being baptized in his name. But we still live in fallen flesh and every single day it needs to be crucified. And that means that our flesh isn't going to be comfortable with us walking in the light. Our flesh isn't going to want to be crucified. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And let's read here. Starting in verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. There is something that we all have to recognize. God can't use us when we're full of pride, self-righteousness, debating, striving, 
He can't use us and he won't. What he will do is chastise us for that. And he will cut that out of our heart. We can either examine our, ourselves before the Lord every single day and allow him to wash us by the word, or we can allow the darkness to take hold in our heart and then suffer the chastising of the Lord. Those are the two ways that we will experience allowing bitterness and unforgiveness and striving and debate to take hold in our heart. Either we can let God take care of that in the morning when we get up and, and to wash us from that. And we seek him about that because it, we're not always going to get an answer right away. My sisters, I didn't get an answer right away. I didn't get an answer right away. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 3. Pardon me. No wonder I was in Ephesians. <laughs> so Galatians chapter 6 and verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. We are nothing without Jesus Christ. All of us are sheep. All of us are his sheep. He is the shepherd. All of us are his sheep. Every single Christian. None of us is anything special other than that we belong to him. Loving the Lord means loving our brother. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4, I believe. 1 John. And verse 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Jesus Christ is coming for a holy bride. And Satan would like very much for God's people to defile themselves and to allow the take, uh, darkness to take hold in their heart. And one way that this continues is shame. So when we know we've done something wrong, it's very hard to admit it. But that's what's necessary because the darkness hates the light. The darkness can only operate in the darkness. The light scatters the darkness. And those who love the light lo love to abide in the light. And we're not frightened because we know that the mercy of God is greater than what we can understand. So when we've done something or said something or felt something, God is righteous to forgive us if we seek him about it. So we first bring it before the throne of grace and we confess our sin and we forsake it. And then we trust that he is able and willing and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we have to get rid of the root. We have to pull it out of our heart. We, and, and sometimes what that means is going to our brother or our sister and saying, I thought you were doing this or that. This, I was really angry at you. I said this, I did that. So that that thing can be forgiven and it can't come back. However, there are people who love to flatter this kind of thing. 
and they like to encourage it, and they like to form these little coalitions, and they flatter you and tell you you're right when you're wrong, and they agree with you, and they give you what your flesh wants. So they pat your flesh and say, oh, you're so right, and isn't that person so wrong? And, and so you can form a little enclave. And we want to be very careful about this because um, this is how we can fall into thinking that we're right when we're wrong. Because even if we're right about the accusation we have in our heart, the person to bring it to is the person who offended us, not to form a little coalition of, of, um, of um, evil thinking and, and evil surmising and, and accusation. So even if we're right about what's harmed us, to do that is what's wrong. And there are plenty of people who will flatter you and try to encourage that. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 23. And verse 8, and we'll see what happens when we give in to this. So we'll start in verse 23 so you get the context. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. So here we're going to talk about spiritual food. And when we're, when we're sitting before someone that, that is um, powerful or we respect. And put a knife to thy throat. If thou be a man given to appetite, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Verse 6, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, which is an eye of envy. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. Dainty meats are flattery. When someone tells you you're right. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel, so the flattery, the, the pampering of your flesh, the encouragement of, of your abiding in the darkness, the morsel that he gives you to eat, which thou hast eaten, this is verse 8. The morsel which thou hast eaten, thou shalt vomit up and lose thy sweet words. None of us is righteous by ourselves. We have the righteousness that is given to us by the grace and mercy of God. We didn't save ourselves. We were saved because God gave us the love of the truth and a heart to obey his gospel. And when we were baptized in Jesus' name, all of our past sins were remitted. And when we received the Holy Ghost, we were filled with the spirit of the living God so that we would have power to serve him. In the spiritual realm, where all spiritual battle is really taking place, we realize that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And the spiritual wickedness in high places wants to insinuate itself into your heart and to cause you to think you're right about hating your brother or your sister. And when this occurs, what happens is you lose your sweet words. And what is that? That is losing the word of God. It's defiling yourself. It's the light in you becoming darkness. And that's why the enemy does it. We are all susceptible to this. And we all need to recognize whom it is we're fighting. And it is not. It is not. It should not be each other. It should not be. If it is true, and it is because Jesus said so, that we would be known in the world, we would be seen as different because of our love for one another. So yes, we look different because as sisters, we cover our head and we dress modestly and we have a meek and quiet spirit. 
So we look different on the outside, but we also look different on the inside because we love one another. If we see a brother or sister stumbling or doing something that offends us, the loving thing to do is to bring it to them, not to bring it to someone else and not allow that root of bitterness to abide in us. So finally, what I want to say is that anyone who's obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is born again of the word of God, who heard about the truth about salvation and recognized that they were a hopeless and vile sinner without hope. And then they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and they obeyed it. So they were baptized in Jesus' name and filled with his Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of the living God. That this occurred because they loved the truth. The truth, however, is not always comfortable for our flesh. The truth is something that is of God. Pilate, when he was interrogating Jesus Christ, our Messiah, he said to him, he said, what is truth? What is truth? And Jesus had said to him, this is the reason I come into the world, to bear witness of the truth. And what is the truth? It's our Heavenly Father. It's the Word of God. When we love the truth, we don't want to depart from the truth. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, there's a phenomenon that is happening in our time, and it's subtle. It can enter into your heart, and you don't know what it is. It can feel so good to be bitter but it is so bad. It will ruin you. It will steal your precious life. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's read verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Having pleasure in unrighteousness is how we can depart from the love of the truth. We can start to think we're something that we're not. We can start to indulge our flesh and partake of things that corrupt us. When we see this happening, the first thing to do is to seek the Lord about it and ask him to make it manifest, to, to show us all of it, what we're doing, what we're partaking of, who it's hurting, and then we ask him to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And then we trust him that he's faithful and just to forgive us. And then we humble ourselves and we go and we make it right with our brother and our sister. And that is how we defeat the enemy. That is how we defeat the enemy. The time is short, my sisters, and that is why this is happening. We're at the very end. And, and please don't become frightened and think, you know, that you're not ready and Jesus is coming tomorrow and Sister Abby said so. That's not what I mean. I mean we're at the time of the end and we all need to, to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, knowing that the only way that we are righteous is through the grace and mercy of God. And when we seek him to cleanse us by the word, he will. But that's an act of subjection and humility. And when we do that, when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt us in due time. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for those of you who are still listening. 
And please know I love you all so very much. It doesn't matter any wrong that was done because as I have been forgiven, I forgive. We all need to do this. We all need to, in love, forgive one another and forbear one another and lift one another up. And then we are holy. And then we are pleasing to our Heavenly Father. And then we are ready for our Savior to come. Glory be to God. Feel free to email me or to comment in the comment section below. And may the word of the Lord go forth today and draw many people into the light where they belong so that the darkness can be destroyed. In Jesus' precious name, amen.